first thing that I'm going to do when I get back is to get some decent food. Bonjour, horror fanatics. By the time this episode goes up, it should be Fat Tuesday. So it's time for Mardi Gras, and what better way to get in touch with the spirit of New Orleans than by exploring a little bit of that voodoo magic. And I figure there's no better way than with an episode of Scary Good Eats, the first one I've done in a while, and exploring a little bit of that voodoo barbecue rub. This is not gonna be like my Horror Hot Ones episodes. I'm gonna be using pork ribs instead of chicken wings. And uh, this is dry rub seasoning. I just want to give a little shout out to any uh, barbecue connoisseurs out there that may watch this. You're going to see me tug at these ribs a bit because they were not prepared in a smoker. They're, they were prepared in an air fryer. Yes, I've got an air fryer. I'm not kind of hipster. But I've got a variety of three different uh, rubs that I want to try here. We're going to give each one a go and see what they do to me. And if I don't end up as a brain dead zombie stalking the bayou. Let's get to it. Okay, so first up, we have got Holy Voodoo by Meat Church Barbecue. Take a look at that label. That's a pretty cool looking label in my opinion. A sugar skull, perhaps a bit more fitting for a Dia de Muerto, Day of the Dead, but still pretty awesome. So let's get a look at our ingredient list here. Um, salt, sugar, brown sugar, spices including paprika, dehydrated garlic, dehydrated jalapeno, monosodium, glutamate, dehydrated onion, and canola oil. Dehydrated canola oil, that's a new one on me. Let's just get a little whiff and see what we're in for here. And um, Actually, that's pretty mild. You know, you'd expect for something that's supposed to be from New Orleans, maybe a little spice, a little Cajun, but um, yeah, but then again, I'm, there's no like a cayenne pepper or anything listed in the ingredients, so I guess I should expect that. I'm definitely getting that uh, that paprika that comes through here more than anything else. Uh, not much, so much the uh, the garlic or the onion or anything else. But we'll see whether or not this is going to be magic or not, or if I'm going to end up coughing my guts out. So, like I said, these were made in an air fryer. There's going to be a little tug to them. Let's give this a shot and see what happens. That's more sweet than anything else. I mean, it does say sugar and brown sugar. Not really getting so much as a hint of, you know, garlic, paprika, or any of that. Should have brought some towels. <laughs> okay, now that I've swallowed it, detecting a little bit of that paprika in the aftermath. And it actually does taste a little bit like they put some kind of pepper in this. Um, not so, not too spicy though, not that that's a bad thing after what I've subjected myself to with uh, my horror hot ones, but um, a tiny little bit of afterbite, but not really that much. Not what you expect from the, uh, the city of New Orleans, and definitely not what you expect from Voodoo. You expect something a little more power, a little more evil to it, but we may be getting to that shortly. Before I move on to my uh, second rib here, I actually want to get further into the uh, history of voodoo and the spirit of New Orleans by just giving you guys a little bit of what I like to call horror history and a horror food fact about uh, a personal favorite of mine, none other than Marie Laveau, the real-life voodoo queen of the city of New Orleans. Uh, most of you probably know her from depictions of her in uh, various media, like most notably on American Horror Story. But she was a real person, and that is a matter of public fact. The records are there in the city of New Orleans. Her grave, in fact, is quite a tourist attraction, or at least it used to be. I think it might actually be uh, off limits now because it was getting vandalized on a routine basis. But uh, in all honesty, outside of the fact that she was at the head of, the, at one time, the city's largest voodoo procession, not a whole lot otherwise is known about her. There's no real records of her, like financial records, birth certificates or anything like that. The closest, I believe, is just a, uh, a licensing for a small liquor distribu distributorship. Excuse me. But nonetheless, she definitely played a big part in shaping the modern culture of the city of New Orleans, and she is a towering figure 
in the imagery of voodoo in the uh, pop culture psyche. For my part, though, I'm inclined to believe there was both more and less to her. Uh, particularly a favorite story of mine about how her influence and notoriety might not have been due to her command of various dark powers and magic. It might have more been that she relied on her congregation to give her information. You know, that her congregation included, you know, uh, maids and butlers and chauffeurs and other, you know, staff to the city's wealthy and powerful. And that any time they learned a little bit about their uh, patrons, they'd be sure to pass it to her, and she'd put it to the best use possible. And there is also a legend that she might even have had a career as a hairdresser whose clientele included the wives and daughters of the New Orleans wealthy and powerful. And while she was uh, styling up their hair, she'd eavesdrop on their gossip, and any time a little juicy tidbit came her way, she'd put it to the best use she could. And there is one particular legend that a wealthy man whose son had been arrested for murder approached her and told her, if you can get my son off, then I'll give you a house. So Marie proceeded to perform an elaborate voodoo ritual that involved stuffing hot peppers into her mouth for several hours as a form of personal sacrifice for her food. And that in the end, the guy's son got off and she got her house. But uh, heh, there is an alternate version, probably a bit more realistic, that, well, Marie just knew something about the judge, and she pretty much approached him and told him, the kid walks, or you're going to read about yourself in the headlines, and the kid walked. But still, she is just a figure whose uh, gravesite I'd love to visit, because there is so much mystique, and I really do want to visit the city of New Orleans and do a bit of digging for myself. Anyhow, that has been my horror food fact and horror history for this video. Let's move on. All right, moving right along, we've got uh, Cindy Lynn's uh, Voodoo Rib Rub. Indulge your taste buds with Cindy Lynn's. This one actually has a legend. Cindy Lynn's Voodoo Rib Rub was developed for competitive rib cook-offs. It has less sodium than our black label. Can't say I've tried that dry rub and can be used on short ribs, beef ribs, and pork ribs, such as here. It has the magic to make the bark unforgettable. Indulge your taste buds with Cindy Lynn's. They like to say that a lot. What about our ingredient list here? Brown sugar, salt, chili pepper, onion, garlic, mustard seed, black pepper, spices, natural flavorings. Natural flavorings and they can't list them? Added sugar, 40% by weight, no MSG, no gluten, no common allergens. Well, gee, that's hopeful. But let's see what this does on the nose. Uh, actually, that's a lot more potent than uh, the uh, the Voodoo Magic there was by Meat Church. Just, uh, wow, you, you can tell they used chili powder. That goes straight up the nostril. In fact, I'm seeing what looks like flex, little uh, specks of red pepper flake in there. And uh, I can also see the thyme. And uh, by the way, I love thyme. It's a really great, great herb, great seasoning. But uh, so this one I'm expecting is going to be quite a bit more powerful than the other one. Let's see if this does not uh, bring about the curse of voodoo on me. Which side's got a little more tug to it? Um, okay. Here's calling on Loa. Wish me luck. Well... On the first bite, it is not that bad. Definitely right on the, the crunch of that uh, texture, you can taste the um, that chili powder, but it's not overpowering. It's not hitting me like a sledgehammer. Maybe if I was to, to bite into like this uh, dark crusty side here, I guess, um... nope, not even getting it there. Not that that's a bad thing. Okay, on that part, yeah, getting a little aftertaste. But um, overall, this is very mild. Even milder than the, uh, the previous one was, which surprises me for how sharp that was going up the nostril. But um, getting just a tiny bit of sweet heat here. You can tell there's sugar in this, but that they added just a bit more, uh, like that chili powder and of other spices, the, the mustard seed and... 
to help enhance the flavor, which really to me, that's what barbecue should be all about, sweet and heat. I would definitely recommend this one. So let's see what the uh, next spell has for me. And finally, to finish us off, we have Andy Roo's original voodoo Cajun. Cajun rub here. Now, if it's Cajun, that usually means there's gonna be a lot of kick to it, but uh, that's what I went into this challenge expecting, and so far, I've actually been pretty surprised by how mild they've all been. Maybe some of you out there might know a better one. But uh, there's really no legend here, just a suggestion to uh, use this for deep frying and to use it on oysters, shrimp, chicken, frog legs, and uh, roosters, raccoons, nutria, hush puppies, rabbit, rabbit, duck, squirrel, elephant, rattlesnake, alligator, etc. But if you do, voodoo may occur. Clever. Our ingredient list here says salt, paprika, onion, garlic, black pepper, red pepper, and other spices. Oh, they want to keep it a mystery. And of course, no MSG. So let's give this a little whiff. Um, that's not as sharp as the previous one was, but it's definitely pretty mild. You know, there's, there's a touch of heat I detect here, but not all that much. So I'm guessing this is just going to be another mild one. Only way to tell, of course, is to find out. So here's up to you. Yeah, another letdown, like just, I shouldn't say that right off the bat, just the taste of it on the tongue, but this is more salty than anything else. I do not get any heat or even any real hints of like garlic or other such spices, just a lot of salt. It's actually making me pretty dry. So um, yeah, this was not quite the witch's brew I was expecting to come out of the city of New Orleans and out of the bayou there. But this probably ain't exactly pure voodoo magic either, so I probably shouldn't be surprised. So that is my voodoo magic uh, rubs review. I gotta be honest, I was let down by all three of these. I was hoping for a little more, a little more variety, a little more flavor, but there's not that much difference between them. And uh, maybe you guys know of a better one. Feel free to let me know in the comments section or via Twitter or Facebook. And uh, to all the people in New Orleans, hey, have a safe and happy Mardi Gras and uh, enjoy the season. That is a dream destination of mine. I will get there eventually. I am saving up to try to make it happen, hopefully for my 40th. I would love to do a live stream there because there is just so much great music, so much great food and drink, and so much great haunted history, as you also saw in this video. As always to my fellow horror fanatics, take your precautions, wash your hands, wear your mask, and look out for each other. Eat, drink, and be scary, and I'll see you next time.